Portland Thorns hosted Oil Rain in the uh, first round edition of the 2022 regular season Cascadia rivalry. Uh, and these two teams played out to a 0 0 draw. And it was a bit of a rainy, soggy affair yeah. in this one. Tough. Uh, we saw the ball movement not so great. I mean, maybe it's obviously it's already artificial turf, number one. And then you've got this combination of rainfall pretty consistent throughout the match from you know minute one all the way through through minute 90 and we had an ol rain team on the road quote unquote right not not too far mm -hmm. of a trip though we talked about that in our preview that maybe this wasn't a regular type of away game where the length of time away isn't too too lengthy uh, but Laura Harvey uh, also mentioning a little bit in, in the post game of this one, talking about how the match felt very Portland, very Seattle, kind of frantic and uh, and kind of hectic. And uh, I got to say, I agree with her assessment of this match a little bit. I, I almost kind of felt as this match continued to go on that there was potential for if there was going to be a, a sort of breakthrough goal that it would come by way of sort of an oops or yes. by some, yes. some type of error or, or otherwise. Um, and we saw, we saw some interesting things on, on both sides of the pitch from, from both teams here. Um, but Portland looking definitely, in my opinion, uh, to have had some of the better of chances in this game. And unfortunately the ball just did not, just did not trickle in the back of that net, by by any uh, from the post, uh, in this in a, in a game like this but you know even in shots for both of these team leases both ending and in, in 17 apiece uh but all those shots and nobody able to get oh. a breakthrough goal uh in this one unfortunately we've got to see a little bit more time from megan rapina who's working her way back into the fold got it uh, substituted into this game just past the hour mark so we're starting to see her build on some minutes a little bit here but i'm i'm loving what we're seeing in the attack uh, from from Weaver, from Smith, from Sinclair, oh, yeah. I think it's uh, I think it's going to be something that we're just going to continue to see evolve as as the season goes on. That trio for Portland, Smith, Weaver, Sinclair, is really fun to watch. I know that JP and Lori on the call were talking about their age difference between those, specifically Christine Sinclair, who's a very veteran player, and Sophia Smith, who's in her low twenties, and that their relationship on the pitch is seamless they they can read each other's minds they run off each other so well their combination play is incredible and from morgan weaver she fits into that trio seamlessly and we're seeing a lot more confidence from morgan weaver which i am really happy to see we're seeing her take shots when she has them whereas uh and they're good shots they're on frame it, it's forcing tolis joyce to make a save whereas last year we saw weaver either dishing those off at the last minute or they weren't well enough struck shots. So I'm impressed with what I'm seeing from Morgan Weaver. You mentioned all the shots throughout this match and it ends even between Portland and rain Bella Bigsby, Portland goalkeeper had three saves Fallon tallest Joyce for OL rain, six saves on the night. Uh, you mentioned one or two of them going off the post. This, this game was, it was a little sloppy between these two sides, but you mentioned the conditions and, and how everything was working out, but the three back for Portland and then they're five in the midfield with Klingenberg and Quika being those wing backs that can drop in defensively. And then with yeah. possession, it contribute to the attack. It's incredible oh, yeah. to watch. Big, big so game from, from Quika, a player I really mm -hmm. enjoyed watching in, in this one. And and I'm really enjoying seeing someone like Janine Becky also getting extended yeah. minutes, you know, just still kind of probably maybe getting uh, adjusted, you know, to time, with the thorns she literally just got with with the club but good to see her get subbed in and, and try to you know come off the bench and, and be one of those game changers right that we always hear uh, players refer to as in, in in this league uh but in terms of the ol rain side of things i mean very impressive i think too along the right hand side uh, looking at yeah. sofia huerta in this game ridiculous ridiculous <laughs> stat i thought it was a typo when i saw it lisa but sofia huerta ended this game with 132 touches and i was like what and thankfully thankfully during the, the post game uh our, our colleague Susie Rance was out there and asked says hey was that by design Laura Harvey like well what what are we looking at here and and Laura Harvey saying yeah it was a little bit of a tactical design it's something that they want to continue to do they want to continue to see Sophia were to get more touches on the ball they would like to see uh play build up through her when possible and they're going to continue to try to work with her uh on that but uh was I again I saw it and I was like there's no there's no way so <laughs> real 
context for context for people. Sofia Huerta, 132 touches. The next highest for OL Reign is Lauren Barnes. So uh, opposite position, which makes yeah. a lot of sense, 88 touches. <laughs> That is the disparity between these two sides. And for Portland, Natalia Huica uh, having 81 at, at the number one. So <laughs> that is insane. That is insane. So that means Sofia Huerta and Lou Barnes had more touches than Huica, who had the most for Portland throughout this match. Like, it is so impressive. Yeah. But if you get Sofia Huerta on the ball, she's going to create magic with it. She's confident on it. She can beat defenders. She can combine really well. She has a great vision to play those assisted balls into the box and, and lofted balls with great texture. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm excited for a lot more of these rivalry oh, games yeah. to come. I was going to say, this one This one ended in a 0-0 scoreline. But what it left me with was I was like, I can't wait for the next one. And yeah. we're going to see, we're going to have to wait a little bit. It's going to take place in the summer and, and, uh, and Seattle is going to host that one at Lumen field. But even though this ended in a zero, zero scoreline, what we saw, I think coming out of it was just, we want to see the next edition of it for sure. So we'll see what the next one turns out. If it ends up being a result, if they end up splitting points again, we will see another match that ended in a draw was Orlando pride and Kansas city current this one in a 2-2 draw, not a scoreless draw for this one. So we've got some we've got some goals and some things and some scenarios to talk about in this one. Lisa, I think when we were previewing this one, uh, we were talking a little bit about what we would like to see from these two teams. What, what were the picks that we had in, in this one when we were making our preview? Um, so just to reflect Portland OL Rain, we both had OL Rain what? dubbed for that one. You had Orlando and I had a draw in this. Oh, I love. Okay, so I love this for you, pal. Let me tell you, uh, watching this in real time, towards again all these chaotic energy moments that we were witnessing throughout the weekend. That this all one, happened this at the game, end of the game. <laughs> this, this game for me it ranks number like one in terms of the chaotic energy. Oh, I love that. In this one, it, there was just a lot going on when you if you are only able to watch you know, 20 minutes of this game, watch like the last 20 minutes, yeah. or you can head on over to our YouTube channel and check out the extended highlights. That will also tell you a li little bit more of the story in this one. Uh, but, you know, I think when we're looking, let's start with the home side here first, mm -hmm. Lisa. When we're looking at Orlando Pride, I know we talked a little bit about wanting to see both of these teams really. I know we're focusing on the home side right now, but we wanted we wanted to see some progression in this regular season. I know for Orlando Pride, we're like, hey, they're coming off of a win against Angel City. Let's see them try to extend and and build on that. And now here they are hosting at home a Kansas against the Kansas City side that is, you know, kind of stumbled out of the gate here uh, during the regular season after an impressive Challenge Cup also trying to find a result for themselves in this regular season. And as these two teams kind of go head to head, we started to see for Orlando, why a player like Gunny John's daughter has become yeah. so essential to them. Why the return of Aaron McLeod has been massive for this club. Uh, coming up with a number of saves down the stretch, kind of making things difficult, keeping things even for this Orlando pride team. And then, when they got this goal, again, a game that had all the goals coming in the second half, when they got this goal in the second half, LaRue connecting with John Stutter, maybe kind of saying, okay, let's maybe try to rely a little bit on, on our shape, goalkeeping. But unfortunately, that was not enough because at least Bennett, who was listed as questionable for this game, yeah. Lisa comes on and gets the equalizer for Kansas City in the 78th minute. So Elise Bennett, rookie, changed this entire game for 100%. Kansas City. It, if if you're going to watch the 20 minutes of this game, watch it after Bennett subbed on to this match because it was fantastic from her. It, it, she came on at the hour mark, 62nd minute, and it allowed another outlet for Kansas City in the front line because Addie McCain was getting so sucked in and defending against Sydney LaRue throughout the first 60 minutes of this match that McCain wasn't an outlet for the <laughs> Labanta and Scott in the midfield. Instead, as soon as Bennett came on, she said, I'm not marking LaRue. I'm not marking LaRue. I'm not marking anyone. I'm going to occupy this space that is being wide open in 
in the flanks, in behind LaRue. And when Peterson pushes up, that's where Bennett was occupying the space. And they continued to find her. And when Bennett gets the ball, she looks to go to goal. She looks to make a difference. And that's what we saw. It's it's a shame she was dealing with a bit of an injury because um, Elise Bennett to go 90 yeah. minutes against Washington or against Orlando, this could have been a different game for Kansas City, but that yeah. wasn't the case at all. Um, but, but the opening goal coming from Orlando and then after... Elise Bennett subs on in the 60th minute. She gets a goal in the 78th minute. It's an assist from Labonta and evens it up for, for yeah. these two sides. And then they get another one and it's assisted by Bennett coming uh, towards Matt the end of this game. This was like the start of stoppage time because there was so many minutes added on to this game. Um, uh, looking at the player personnel, at least for Orlando throughout this match, Leah Pruitt, I've been pleasantly surprised with her work ethic against Angel City for Orlando last week. She was incredible off the ball, defending, working to get back. And, and throughout this match, she became an outlet for Orlando when they were looking to go forward. And so many teams hone in on LaRue, even Jenkins, that Pruitt has the ability to hold the ball up and, and she's making a difference for Orlando pride. I think Pruitt had a really good game for Orlando and Amanda Cromwell, but I mean, Elise Bennett for Kansas city. This is such a fun player to watch, but ultimately uh, a two one to Kansas city in oh the stoppage time of this match. And this is where it gets a bit chaotic because oh my goodness. the 90th minute and the 97th minute, there was, Two yellow cards, two goals, a, a foul, a penalty kick happening. That's how Orlando ends up getting the equalizing goal in, in the waning minutes of stoppage time at the end of this match. And Tony Presley, uh, <laughs> center back, knocking it down. I was shocked. The, the way this one ended, you would you would think that a 90-plus-1 a stoppage time goal would essentially be the game winner in this one. But this was not the case. There was a ton of stoppage time that was given to begin with. About, what, three or four minutes, I think, at the time. And then you have Orlando just turning on the pressure a little bit. I, I appreciated the the refusal to to not result in, in, in this game. I, I really did appreciate that. I it's it that I think that is what I know you and I are, are were looking for when we were we were talking a bit about a little bit of, really even in the offseason about previewing this team. We're like that was our biggest burning question. We're like, you know, is this team going to just like lean in to their rebuild? Like you're gonna have some really tough moments here. But, you know, are you going to at least try to lean into your to your formation, to your tactics, to to the game in front of you? And I think this is a very early example of them doing that. So this this foul occurs late in stoppage time and against gotta, Desiree Scott or it's against Desiree Scott. And we got to talk about this a little bit because this is a moment where maybe it could have gone the other way. And if it had it gone the other way, maybe we'll be talking about this game in a different way that is an emphasis on officiating. But I've mentioned this before on this show that I appreciate the officiating crews taking a second or two to make sure that they get a call correct yes. before just being like, you know, blowing it off. So there was some confusion here at the moment. They were like, there's a foul that happened. A yellow was issued. And then there was a lot of conversation and chatter that was going on. Then all of a sudden you see Aaron McLeod running all the way into this mix and also getting her, her piece in as well. And as soon as like you saw I have the official was like, let me do my job and like points yeah. to the spot and is like, this is going to be a penalty kick. So I agree with this call completely. I mean, initially as it all happened, the foul happened, um, well outside the box is when the players hit the ground. Yeah. And mind you, these officials, I actually give them a lot of credit because I only realized this watching the replay a hundred times on my TV today. But uh, this foul actually happened in the box, even though the players didn't fall until outside the box. That's why it was awarded as a penalty kick through the end of this game. And Desiree Scott was upset she was like this is not true this is not happening when I saw McLeod for Orlando goalkeeper running into the frame all the way to the other 18 yard box at first I was like oh is she gonna get in and try to score like a late 
winner. But then when she was like near the ball or where the ball was set to take place, I was like, oh, she's arguing against this. And she is giving yeah. her two cents. Um, a lot of credit, honestly, to the official for, for not That's, saying yeah. anything about it. Alex Beltier, I believe, um, Beltier, and frankly, it, I think it was the right call. And yeah, there ends up being right. a penalty kick in the sixth minute of stoppage time, and Tony Presley scores it. A little bit, of, a little bit of a uh, insight. Uh, shout out to Daniel Sperry, who was a, a pool reporting uh, from this game, uh, being able to field question a couple of questions to uh, pro referees. Uh, question referring to the Desiree Scott foul. What what did Desiree Scott do that was deemed a foul that resulted in the penalty kick? And the answer from the officiating crew was that Scott recklessly charged an opponent in the back. And what process? Uh, follow another follow up question was what process was used to determine that the foul in the box was opposed to what seemed to be the original placement of the free kick which was outside the box and the follow-up answer was that the referee received additional information from a crew member to determine that the foul was actually in the penalty area so again i appreciate that those Me moments too. when they occur i'd rather you take the extra couple seconds to, to get it right even if it is in uh in stoppage time i think uh, in the course, sixth minute <laughs> in the sixth minute you're seeing that but i think the maybe the funniest part about all this is that while this is happening you sort of maybe feel like okay if this much deliberation is going on there's probably going to be a penalty kick right like it's taken and all of a sudden we see Tony Presley with the ball in her hands. And like, this was part of in the back of my head. I'm like, okay, we're, th we're thinking all these things about Orlando, but we're also one. I'm like, who is on this pitch right now? That's available to right. take or convert a penalty kick. Like what's going to happen here. And then all of a sudden it's the center back. Yes. Tony Presley, because, who, who had a tough couple of minutes towards the end there. Oh yeah. Well, because at this point in throughout the stoppage time, Darren Jenkins had been subbed out. Uh, Gunny Yon's daughter had been subbed out. Those are the initial players that I would say they're going to knock it down. And the fact that Presley does this, maybe she was making up for some of her um, uh, tough plays that happened because uh, Looking at the goals for Kansas City, Presley wasn't marked tight enough. If you give Kristen Hamilton space, she's going to oh, turn and yeah. shoot and score. And and Hamilton maybe could have had two or three goals throughout this match because Presley wasn't marked up tight against her. She gave her way too much space. And you cannot do that to a player like Hamilton. And uh, But I guess she redeems herself. Presley, she knocks down the goal and, and they split the points between Orlando and Kansas City at the end of this. Yeah, I maybe a little bit of a <laughs> maybe a little bit of a redemption song there, I guess I maybe for, for pressing in Orlando Pride, snatching up points. And you know, we gotta we gotta call it like it is. And we're talking about uh, you know, San Diego being on a win streak. We're looking at Orlando Pride right now, they're undefeated in two games. So I don't know. We're we're taking we gotta keep it. We might Anything have to can hands. happen. Anything, Anything can happen, happen in the NWSL. Uh we gotta talk about the last one on the docket here. It's another draw racing Louisville and Houston Dash. These two teams playing out to a 1-1 one, one draw. Another game where the action in terms of the goal scoring did not occur until late until the the, the 15 final 15 minutes of the match. And so Prince getting on the board for Houston Dash with a lovely header in the 77th minute. But unfortunately, just a mere five minutes later, racing Louisville would equalize in the 82nd minute with another editor from Jessica McDonald. So these two splitting the points and kind of a little bit of a physical game. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're talking about kind of chippy and choppy. I'm going to chalk this one up, Lisa, to the fact that, listen, there, there's going to be some games this year in the regular season that are probably going to feel this way because of the familiarity between yes. some of these teams already. So the fact that we had a little bit of an extended reformatted challenge cup divided over three groups, teams already playing each other twice at some moments in this year, now playing each other for a third time in about a month or, or five weeks or so uh, that is going to leave a little bit less element of surprise, I think for some teams and the familiarity can sometimes lead to just some physicality and not too surprised to see this one end in a draw, uh, a, a low draw at this one. I think I had this one as a draw, Lisa. I don't know if you want to remind you me. You okay. had this as a draw. I had Louisville taking the win in this one. 
Fair, fair. I mean, they, I mean, they could have, quite frankly. I mean, they, they, they had their moments, and so did so did Houston. I mean, another again, uh, we're talking about two teams that ended up committing uh, more fouls, I think, than than actual sh- shots. I think uh, yeah. <laughs> ten shots for Louisville, then they committed eleven fouls, eleven shots for Houston, and then committing fifteen fouls. You know, so it was a uh, it was a tough one, maybe to watch in terms of uh, looking at the analytical side of things of of the X's and O's on a pitch in this one. But honestly, Lisa, I think that's why I ended up going with a draw in our preview when right. we talked about this one. I was like, you know what, these two teams have played each other a couple times already yeah there was a couple moments there was a shootout I don't know if it's going to be that high again but here we are with another draw I agree. I mean, this match was interesting as it unfolds. We see Shea Groom get the start for Houston, her first one of this year. Um, and I was pleasantly impressed with Savannah DeMello, the rookie for right. Racing Louisville. She had uh, a few really good chances, a set-piece opportunity that did uh, really, really close. Um, but, yeah, this looking at like the timeline of events throughout this match, it all starts in the second half uh, looking at this. But save-wise, Katie Lund had a good game for Racing Louisville. Three saves for her. Um, and then Jane Campbell in goal for Houston, also putting yeah. up a big big stops as they could. But the back-to-back goals between these two sides was um, – it's almost as though Houston got the goal from Prince in the 77th minute. And then it, just a few minutes later, as Louisville responds, Houston almost deflated in a sense. Yeah. And Jess McDonald rising to the occasion, knocking yeah. down a great header, a really, really good goal from McDonald. And that's why Kim yeah. Bjorkegren and Racing Louisville is very happy to have Jess McDonald on their team because she can come up clutch in big moments like that. And they end up splitting the points. Yeah, I like I like that Houston's kind of came off of a little bit of a, a set piece that was mm-hmm. was retained in, in in the dangerous areas there. Uh, Maria Sanchez gets serving in the ball. Ellie Price not getting hit goes off the post, but Nichelle Prince is there to put it away. Really glad she was able to get on the scoreboard for the dash. Uh, I know we are both like really eager to see more of, of this kind of attacking trio for, for Houston um, with, with Sanchez and Prince and, and daily kind of get going. And, but I'm also loving this continued growth between Malay and McDonald. I think we're really starting to oh, see yeah. a really good collaboration between the two of them. So I'm, uh, I'm liking the little things that we're seeing, even within the draws throughout these games that took place over the weekend.